Welcome to Crave the Book Podcast, episode 21. Today, we're going to be covering chapters 11 through 17 of Tracy Wolf's Crush. And we've got a really fun encounter in these few chapters with Jackson and Flint and Grace and a lot of tension going on between the three of them. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, episode 21. Uh, there's quite a bit going on in this episode. Uh, but last week we had talked about how Tracy was going to make a huge announcement and we weren't able to cram that announcement into the episode because it was taking place the day after we uh, recorded. But that announcement was that there's going to be another book. So this isn't new to you. You guys probably already have heard that the series is going to be extended. Cherish is going to be the official final book, but there is also going to be Remy's uh, spinoff that's going to be coming out and, you know. Which is definitely called Cajun. A Cajun, yes. That's what we're going with. It's going to be called <laughs> Cajun. Um, and, you and know. it's going to be a lovely little crab on the front. <laughs> yes, a little crab, a little sh a shrimp. Um, or, or, or a gumbo pot. A big old gumbo. You didn't even know what gumbo was until. I still don't. <laughs> gumbo. Google it. Google it. Big pot of gumbo so uh yeah new new book cover was actually revealed this morning um if you go to yay if you go to the crave series aesthetic instagram into the wallpapers tab we have already created some fun wallpapers for you with the uh new book cover so now you have one efficient for all of them. efficient nice we and efficient very quick very quick so super did you like the did you like the new cover i did and you know what's funny is you guessed it yeah, we we guessed it. I thought it was either going to be the crowns or the promise uh, promise rings, and um, I you thought it was going to be purple or gray. I said purple or gray. That was the only thing that made sense to me. And I only well, said charm. Charm is gray, isn't it? No, it's blue. It's, it's oh okay. It's like it's like a pale yeah. blue. Um, yeah, I thought gray because in the sneak preview that Tracy gave, I saw like a little bit of a grayish color, but I saw a pixel. Yeah. You saw a pixel and sniffed the color out. <laughs> yes. I was like this, this is, this is the only explanation, but purple makes like, sense. Sat there, sat there matching hex coats. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it was, it was a part of the crown that had like a, a mm -hmm. silverish where the light was reflecting. So, um, but and it matches your hoodie perfectly. Your cat it, hoodie. Yes. It matches and, it perfectly. Um, and Tangled Teen is selling those now, by the way, the, uh, Cat Mirror Academy, um, like varsity sweatshirts. Those are, I think that they're doing pre orders for everybody who had wondered how to get your hands on those. The influencers uh, were sent them out of nowhere. I woke up one morning and looked out on my porch and there was a giant Cat Mirror Academy logoed <laughs> bag on my porch. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Um, it's, it's your it's your acceptance letter to the school. I know. Pack I was, now. I was like, wow, I'm I'm about to turn 30 and I got accepted into a high school. How cool and kind of creepy, but I loved it. I, I love it. Um, So a couple quick things before we get started with the episode, because we kind of need to blast through my my little one might have COVID. Hopefully she doesn't, but we're going to we got to get her tested. Um, Synopsis. Amber, I had noticed this um, with the books where if you read the inside dust jacket or if you've got the paperback it'll be on the back of the book there are letters highlighted in each of the books like a hidden word and um do you do you by chance remember what the words were offhand yes uh the so first one says monster mm -hmm. crush says divided and covet says escape I mean, and obviously, it, we don't know what the rest of them would be, but I'm hoping that they'll be equally as cool. I'd never noticed because I read them all on Kindle until oh. I bought them all on hard, <laughs> hardback. And um, the Crave edition, the, f the first one that I got was when I was in Ohio with you when we got oh, okay. our signed editions. So I didn't even have a look at it, really, until we started reading Crush. And then I was like, <gasps> and then somebody else confirmed in the Wolfpack group. The other day, and I was like, oh, I did think that it was odd that it was yeah. just Crush, and then realized I just didn't look at the other ones. That's fun, little Easter eggs that, yeah, just, uh, attention to detail. I wonder what the next one's going to be because that's going to be the first thing I'm going to check out, see what War. the mystery word is. 
battle war fight. The mystery word. Um, Amber's husband. Amber's husband. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Hudson. Hudson. <laughs> Scott. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we get too far into the uh, episode and before I forget, do you want to tell them what sound they should be listening out for while listening to the yes. episode if they're new here? The sound that you've got to listen out for so that you know when we are entering the spoiler section of our podcast will be the click, click, clack, clack, clack of a crab. <laughs> I'm joking. It will be the howl of a wolf as normal. And that will be the signifier that we are leaving the spoiler free section and we're going into the scary, scary territory where you might hear something that you were not supposed to because you haven't read that far. So if you haven't read that far, feel free to drop out. We're not going anywhere. These episodes will stay online forever, as long as we have our accounts still, and uh, come back when you have got to that point. Absolutely. And Tracy's making sure that this series of podcasts never ends. It just like, keeps going. We, we had it all planned out. We were like, okay, there's only going to be this many books, so it's maintainable. We'll be able to do it, wrap this up. Maybe be able to move on to other ventures, but then more books just keep coming and we're just like, okay, I guess we are going to do more books. So here we are. And the, and the viewers keep coming as well. So true. we're not exactly going to be speaking to an empty room. Absolutely. It just keeps growing, guys. Uh, keep sharing us on social media, though. We definitely don't have the amount of viewers that we need to monetize the channel. That doesn't cost you guys anything. It just means that we're able to actually get the money from the advertising that most of you probably already have you know, through your accounts, you already have ads. It's just the platforms that are getting paid. And we would like that money. Please. This isn't our day jobs. <laughs> yeah, we would like. We it. take time out of our actual day jobs to do this for you. And as much as we love it, if we want to keep making contacts, but as, as our audience grows, it does get more and more difficult to kind of come up with content that nobody else has already seen. We don't want to keep rehashing the same Wingo Wednesdays. We don't want to do the same ASMR videos again and again. Um, so the more time we spend on it, the more content we can give out. And more so. giveaways. Giveaways, you guys might not know this, yes. but the giveaways that we host, I actually estimated they come it out. out of your pocket. Yeah, there are $100 per giveaway that we host. We send 100 I pay $100 every time we host a giveaway. So, And that does not, we don't make any money from the podcast. So anything you guys can do to share it, to recommend it to friends, post screenshots, let people, and you guys do a great job of that. Like we, mm -hmm. we, we definitely credit you guys for the success of the podcast. But if you want it to keep being a thing, just you don't forget to keep sharing it. It really does help but uh you ready to jump in because we've got yes we have confrontations um so grace is going off with with flint to do her photography assignment they need to go around catmere academy and get certain photos of <laughs> you pictures know, of lovely architecture of architecture yes and um she's feeling you know she's feeling annoyed that she has to go out with go with Flint because he did just try to kill her, but he's really trying to, you know, kind of win her favor back. He's being mostly quiet, which is probably yeah. out of guilt, but she doesn't want that either. She's like, she just wants things to go back to how they were. And it's one of those things where, like, how do you put something back together that ended so catastrophically? I mean, he tried to murder her. She still has, like wounds on her body from where he tried to kill her i mean in a normal non-fantasy situation the clear answer would be don't be friends with that person no matter what uh, get a restraining <laughs> yeah. order well yeah. she says that she misses the friend that like toasted marshmallows with her in the library and she misses the friend that like carried her up the stairs and things like that and i'm like you've known him for like four days that is true. She w Crave took place <laughs> over the span of a week. So she really didn't get to spend a lot of time with him. Then again, no. you can build very unhealthy and unhealthily uh, dependent attachments to people when you've gone through trauma where she immediately was able to latch on to the people who were treating her well, especially since so many tr people tra or treated her badly when she first arrived at Katmere. So the people that she did form bonds with, it was fast and intense. And that's not necessarily a, a healthy thing. Um, it's not a bad thing if the no, people are trustworthy. He's, he's not a bully. He's, he's yeah. not a bully. When he's speaking to her, he is 
really quite fun, lighthearted, joking. Uh, he's quite a positive person to be around. Um, he keeps everything quite upbeat, and it, the conversation is really fast paced, and they don't they don't linger on sad or depressing or angry topics no. if they're having an argument flint doesn't really bite back because he knows that he was in the wrong that he did do a dirty and he did try to kill her so i don't necessarily think that it's a friendship that she shouldn't have continued um and also the way that she goes about it is that she realizes that what they're missing in that conversation is the fun that they had before so she does start injecting it mm-hmm. into the conversation and does start kind of teasing him and and things like that um and i think he eventually warms up to the fact that she might not have forgotten or forgiven him but she's definitely not not wanting a friendship with him still yeah um and uh yeah the, the way that she says like the things that she 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 wants to be around him and she wants to have conversations with him but she just does not trust him yeah. And I mean, here's the thing. He owns it. Like normally, especially at that age, I'm sure that a lot of our younger listeners can also agree that when you're at that age and you call somebody out for something wrong that they did, the the teenage response a lot of the time is to go and I didn't you no know, well, I did it because I need I needed to do it because like if you would just understand and they they just try to justify their bad yeah. behavior. He doesn't do And there's do no that. sincere apology either. Exactly. And he doesn't do that. He like apologizes and he has nothing to say. He doesn't argue it. He doesn't deny it. He doesn't try to justify why he did it. He's just like, yeah, I really messed up. So that's that is a good sign because normally when it comes to somebody who has like a narcissistic personality, they're going to just deny it because they want to be able to continue doing doing it um or excuse themselves like why they did it exactly so um Um, he also is really quite considerate in the way that he realizes that going down the tunnels might be a step too far for her so he offers to do it for her and um he's saying i i'm not saying that you shouldn't be alone with me or that you're incapable of it i am offering you that as a possibility because i know that it could be difficult for you and i understand why you wouldn't trust me there of all places yeah yeah um so did- he, he also he also says that he he had punishments from flint and and nothing nothing that flint can throw his way would be enough to foster uh, for, for, yeah f- i said finn finn finn, finn and flint finn, flint um, foster foster gives him punishments and i wonder and i wonder what the punishments were <laughs> to equate to trying to kill a student <laughs> His, yeah, his niece. And his, and his niece, yeah. I can't think of anything. Like, I don't think lines or, like, exclusion or expulsion or, like, none none of the normal school punishments would fit the crime. <laughs> he should make him turn into a dragon and then melt all of the snow off of, the, uh, like, the rooftops with his with his. You could breath. do one, with one of those right now, couldn't you? Oh, my God, yeah. We we actually had a service <laughs> come do our driveway because it was, it was so bad. Um, I'm wondering whether he had to keep the school's furnaces going for a few, few Yeah, weeks. he's like the billows, like, a woo, a woo. <laughs> <laughs> So Jackson stumbles in, and, you know, this interaction was very weird to me because Jackson, yeah, he's he's very upset, but he keeps his cool... He's like, he's just chosen the high road of not even acknowledging Flint at Mm -hmm. all. And I mean, Flint and Grace, they are, they're way closer than I would be comfortable with if I like walked in and I'm I'm like, oh, I can, I can see Jackson's reaction and not, not just like that defensive, you are mine reaction, but just kind of the hey, I think dumb- any human, any person would feel that it's um the way that they were co- like having a conversation. It was flirting, yeah. And that you could say that it was platonic and innocent and and nice, nice and just completely normal conversation between two friends. Doesn't matter what gender they are and what sexuality they are. It was flirting. It was so. I think that it. It turned into it when Jackson was there. I don't, yes. I didn't detect that, that 
that flirtiness until Jackson actually arrived. And I really think that it wasn't Flint. Flint necess- knew. I, well, I don't think that Flint was trying to get a rise out of Jackson. I mean, maybe he was, but I think it was almost like he he wanted to be part of the joke. Like he wanted to, I feel like this is Flint doing two things and doing both incorrectly. I think for one, he <laughs> wants to be part of the gang now. Like he's like, you know, I messed yeah. up, but I want to be, I want to make jokes too. But then he's making all the wrong jokes, but he's also kind of like excited to see that he's getting a response out of Jackson because at first Jackson was just ignoring it. And Grace. Yeah. But then he says the one thing that just can't go ignored and he ends up getting punched <laughs> in the face for it. Yeah, and and the line like, "Wow, uh, I didn't have you for a sucker punch, Vega." Also, like, you always surprise me. I, I wasn't expecting a sucker punch from you, Vega. And then he's like, "The problem with a sucker punch is you need to look up the definition because you had to have known that it wasn't coming, and he definitely didn't provoke it." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was an interesting interaction altogether. I I, I was also wondering. You said you and me do it. And I'm not I'm not entirely sure whether it's something that everybody does, but I've definitely noticed that we do it, is that sometimes we pretend to flirt with each other. Yeah. Oh yeah. For and fun. It- and I'm just wondering whether that was just the way that flirt like the flirting happened between Grace and Flint was that like it was banda and they both knew that it was not on the cards for either of them whatsoever. So they played along with it and had some fun. Yeah, I mean I I and even my husband, he's all like in a death metal band and all <laughs> and he's the same way with, with his all of his bandmates like he'll message him be like hey baby what are you doing tonight yeah exactly like, and it's like it's like a, a a way to be more informal and more familiar with somebody this is really especially a... if you Especially if you know that they're they're not interested in you in that way. Yeah, it's a new it's a new thing too. I don't see our our like parents' generation. They weren't doing oh, this. No, I think it's no. a, this is something like the hug culture. You know, I think that our our age when we were in high school, we we like normalized like hugging and being close to friends on that level and actually sharing. Whereas our parents' generation, they weren't sharers. And now I think that it's just kind of a normalized thing where there's no taboo there, just to playfully be like silly with your friends even if it's just mm-hmm. you know because there's that, that it's, it's comfortable it's people you trust yeah and and this also the the knowledge that you're comfortable in your sexuality as yeah. well like i think that no man in a, our parents generation would be comfortable with flirting with a man mm-hmm. because it wasn't acceptable in that way to a majority of people and they would never want they would never want the wrong impression to be given. Whereas us nowadays, which we don't give a shit. It, exactly. Because we know what we are and we know what our friends are and we can jump a bit more fluidly around the topics because we we are comfortable in who we are. Absolutely. And I like seeing that reflected in books because, you know, you're only going to get that. You're only going to normalize it the more it's talked about, especially in a book that's set in uh, in you know a modern modern day like grace grace just got an iphone so obviously and i love the future proofing that that tracy did there where she said that jackson gave her the newest model iphone rather than giving it a name because when, <laughs> no matter what there's always gonna be a new iphone so it makes sense um so let's see we, we skipped the a- giant conversation um, so they are talking about the teacher that teaches the mystical architecture or whatever the class is called. And uh, we find out that he is, in fact, an actual giant. Um, and Jackson and Flint have like a kind of back and forward where Grace isn't really sure what to believe because they say that there are bones of students who disobey the teacher. They eat babies. And he eats babies, and even now I'm like, did do they do they eat people? Do what? they eat babies? <laughs> I love how like it oh, th- that fast that fast like Flint and Jackson are kind of I mean they're yeah. it's like they're not talking to each other, but they're still like going the same parallel direction. It's like mm-hmm. they're both you know poking fun at Grace, but they're going they're not acknowledging each other yet i just thought that that was a really funny thing um but then 
Flint puts his arm around Grace, while Jackson's arm is also around Grace, and says something about you about her coming to ride his dragon and that was the first bit of very crude sexual humor that the series has introduced <laughs> like the first bit of like oh wow yep. and i just remember like the first time reading it cracking cracking up i think that should be our our episode title the hey baby want to ride my dragon <laughs> and then Grace is like, no, 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 not not his dragon. Like I was gonna draw, like ride on his dragon, and then she realizes that there is no way out of this conversation that doesn't <laughs> sound like a sexual innuendo. Um, and as as adorable as it is, it definitely, definitely comes across that she is a virgin because the way that she's speaking about it, it she's not comfortable in any way talking about it. And I think they both know. And in fact, maybe make it a little bit worse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, she's keeping in mind that she's seventeen, so yeah. that that makes that makes a decent amount of sense. Though I know that most are a little younger than that, but for the sake mm-hmm. of it remaining a, a YA book, I like that clumsy. Like, even you know, yeah. Out- like if it if it was said in front of us, we'd go, <laughs> "You wish." Right. Not, like not like no 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 I, I didn't I, I didn't mean it like that no 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and and that's what makes it that's what makes it so funny though like I and I really like I really like how Tracy is able to like start throwing these jokes in without fear I, I'm assuming that it's probably something that would probably make you nervous as an author throwing in that innuendo but you know when I notice this more and more when I watch like old movies and old cartoons and things where there's the innuendo that as a kid, it could have been something I watched a hundred times and I never caught it. And then I watch it as an adult and I was like, whoa, that is insanely inappropriate. <laughs> and yeah. But as a kid, you, you're oblivious because you're enjoying the movie for the movie. You're not there for the reading between the lines. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it, they, def- they definitely put them in kids movies specifically to entertain the adults otherwise the adults wouldn't enjoy going to the cinema at all to watch disney movies but yeah. they do um let's see so jackson buys grace a brand new iphone she and she's not happy about it no and i'm getting like edward christian gray christian gray and edward Edward, Edward is... <laughs> They're one and the same. <laughs> Edward wants to buy Bella, like, a, this bulletproof, like, presidential level bulletproof <laughs> glass vehicle. Um, and, yeah, Christian Which Grey Which isn't featured buys, in the movies. Which that, is sad. Yeah, yeah, that's not in the movies. But he wants to buy her everything and she gets really upset. Christian Grey buys Anastasia everything. Literally everything. Um, <laughs> and, and then she's like, what do I get him for his birthday? And she gets him a key ring. <laughs> yeah, she gets him a key ring. I mean, it, it was a marriage proposal. It was adorable. It was. But it was like, genuinely, what could I get you that you couldn't just walk out and buy 70 of? Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm reading this... If I was the price, because you guys, I'm almost 30, ooh. Um, reading this as an adult, and like she talks about the necklace, which Amber and I, we looked it up, and the necklace cost, uh, I think it was like 350 ish dollars if you were to buy it at a Zales or K Jewelers or Hellsberg, which are the big jewelry stores here in the and US. And we lied. It did get mentioned again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. But she's not wearing it, she just mentions it. Um, so like three, we'll say, we'll say $400 for the necklace, which, you know, Hudson ripped it off in the gargoyle. Yeah. It's, it's get, get rid of this. This is your mine and you shouldn't be wearing another man's jewelry. Yeet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but, uh, so we'll say $400 tops and then the iPhone, how much do they run? Like a thousand? You, you, she says about a grand. Yeah. So, you know, that when, when I was 17, that would have felt like an extravagant amount of money and at age 30 i'm like that amount of money is like i i spend that much in a week and then i don't realize i spent it (laughs) the the thing is though it's not even just an exorbitant amount of money it's the fact that it you're like okay but what strings does this come with yeah Um, yeah yeah you've bought me a brand new iphone okay but what bugs are in it 
what bugs are in it. Are you Christian Greying me? I would be so suspicious. Well, it's not activated but then I think yet. That that's just my, I think that's my nature. Is I'm like, okay, so when you go to buy a phone, oh my god, the palaver you have to go through to get like your contract verified and things like that. She doesn't. She not just doesn't have her phone. She doesn't have a SIM card. She doesn't have any of her contacts. So he is gone. Well, and she bought her a phone. She did that and online. Input- she did that online uh, mm. before she went to the art room. She sat and she had to log into her mobile. Or no, it was uh, after art while she was waiting for her first layer of paint to dry. She said something about logging in, and which isn't how did, like the iCloud or yeah, AirDrop or whatever it is. Yeah, the, what she described. We don't have iPhones. Oh, what she described isn't how it works. But she said no. that said she was able. Yeah, but to- it might for iPhones. I don't think so. I don't think that that's how it works. I don't think that you can just activate a phone and have all of your con. I mean, either way, she she activates her phone very quickly, and he's able to get this phone within Completely a couple clean. hours. Yeah, uh, so. uh, to the to the to the Alaskan wilderness. Yes. Yeah. I feel like some kid, like there's the scalper kid. He's like the like the Weasleys of the school, but they sell technology hard to acquire devices. Like, hey man, I've got I've got these 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 iPhones here. Do you want one? Yeah. Like Quick they're look, look for Steve Jr. job who's just working at the Cat Mirror cafeteria. Yeah. He's being a secret little vampire. He's like a little he's, <laughs> he's a like, little scalper. Yeah, dude, you do want the new iPhone? <laughs> yeah, he's he's scalping technology and selling it at a premium to these students who can't acquire it any other way. That would be that would be a fantastic yeah. job, though. That's where Macy's getting all this ice cream. Yep, it's and the- and why it's so expensive is because she's not actually buying it for legit roots. She's actually buying it for a scalper that's, for the convenience of it being fast. That's that's who our our um that's what Damien that we talk about our yeah, made up char- our made up yeah. character from Crave Damien. The boot- the bootlegger. <laughs> Damien the bootlegger. Mm, he's my favorite character. He's got like little like pirate channels like, in the middle of Alaska. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's got little mine carts. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's coming in and he's sneaking them through the uh, the dragon bone yard. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine him. Like one of the ones where you like you push up and then push down and then yeah. push up and then push <laughs> down. <laughs> I can just imagine him, him doing it on his own. It's really, really squeaky. And then he has to go... <gasps> <What>? <laughs> and then... <laughs> So um, Macy up- appears very grandly. Just, yeah, Grace! Yes, my absolute nightmare. <laughs> if so, you can hear someone coming, then you should run the opposite direction. <laughs> so I love, I love that Grace just lets go of Jackson, takes two steps back, maintains eye contact, and she just like gives herself to the. It's like it, when you walk out in front of a tidal wave and hold your arms out and just close <laughs> your eyes and wait for it. And then Macy crashes into her. And what what movies? I know that there are so many movies where the main character like like purposefully like strolls backwards into a busy street and allows an oncoming vehicle to hit them. Did that that happened in Deadpool? It's usually right? a train. A train, yeah. I feel. I feel like that train. happened in Deadpool. Didn't? Didn't he like? I don't remember. <laughs> didn't he allow? Poor... Yeah, because he tries to kill himself yeah. a lot of times. This, I think it's in the second one with the with the the song playing over and over and over. Yeah, <laughs> after his after his his girl dies, he's spo- spoilers from like seven years ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be another movie moment that I can't wait to see. Just her like stepping backwards and then just. Macy tackling her and then she, they both just disappear off screen because Macy has tackled her off of the screen. Um, let's and see. then she tries she tries to bribe her to come to the <laughs> her room rather than go to class. Again, no one wants Grace to have an actual education. I swear, I swear that everybody is trying to get her to to what's the word? We say skive. Do you say skive? No. What's up? Uh, Define that word. Like to skip class. Oh, we say, we either just say skip or play hooky. Hooky is kind of the old, like our yeah, parents. Yeah, we, we don't say, we don't say plucky. Hooky. Hooky. No. Our parents. Know, what the hell is a hooky? Our parents said play and hooky. Uh, we say just skip. You want to skip? No, we say, we say skive. Yeah. Like a skip and a jive all skip in one. Skip and a jive. That sounds cooler. <laughs> I'm good. Sounds like skydiving. Hey guys, you yeah. say skive. Yeah, do you want to go sky and sit on a wall outside school so they know that we're there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, and, th- and then Mace- Macy throws out the term mate. Yeah, All like just so casually. I was like, wait, did we, did I, did I read too fast the end of Crave and miss the fact that somebody told her that she was mates with Jackson or was this the revelation? In which case, oh, Okay, so here's my thought on it. Uh, Jackson knows. Maybe while yeah. Grace was gargoyled, he told Macy, because I'm sure that they talked, and Na- Macy's just one of those, like, she just blurts it out. Like, she just runs with it because she's so excited <laughs> yeah. by it. Doesn't realize that the other person didn't know. Yeah, and Grace, Maybe. Is, Grace is like, you know, I kind of assumed, but I didn't realize, like, with the what that meant until, like, I really sat and thought about it. Because she, it... Yeah, and she's like, I need to go to the library. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I need to go read so yeah um, yeah she su- she suddenly starts having doubts because she's like oh wow like not only like do we love each other and I, and I know that i love him for sure but like for life like mates for life for eternity and he's a vampire it's not gonna be like until they're 70 80 years old it's forever yeah it's like the scene the new moon scene with edward and old bella he's like happy birthday yeah. bella and Grace, happy birthday, Grace. And Grace is just like, oh, thank you, Jackson. <laughs> Can you get my Metamucil and my cane? <laughs> <laughs> is he going to be changing her diapers? Like, is Gargoyle's He's going to be age? giving her, uh, he's going to give her her dentures. <laughs> How many teeth? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what the Gargoyle, like, life He gives her a meal like. and he's like, do you need me to chew it for you? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, heads up for all our young listeners. Um, don't declare your life partner at age 17 after <laughs> only knowing them for a week. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they've <laughs> she's been stoned for the last few months. But, you know, she doesn't remember that. So she has known him for a week. He has known her for a week and he has known of her. <laughs> He is not getting to know nope. her while she's a gargoyle. Then again, he might be sitting. I can imagine him sitting, like reading to her, like stone, like, like a. <laughs> have you seen Castaway with with the volleyball? It's just Wilson, 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 Grace, <laughs> Grace. <laughs> and yeah. not only has it only been a week, she now physically recoils when he tries to kiss us. <laughs> it's all going good. <laughs> It's going swimmingly. You guys are getting... They've already, they've already reached the dry spell in their relationship where she will only accept pecks on the cheek. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we're have we reading... My husband and I, I've got him reading A Court of Thorns and Roses with me. And, I mean, he was he he was like, okay, the beginning of this, kind of not my style because he's not big <laughs> on, like, the constant romance in the beginning of A Court of Thorns and Roses definitely is that establishment of romance. And then Under the Mountain took place. And he's like, yeah, this is pretty... I like this. This is pretty cool. And then, of course, book two starts, Reese appears and steals Pharaoh away. And he's like, I don't like this. I don't like the premise <laughs> of this. <laughs> he doesn't, He doesn't like, change, though. He's a very, like, once things have been established as this is what it is, he doesn't like to veer off and change direction. Yeah. Yeah. This, and <laughs> the, the, the thing is, like... That point in which, like, a female character comes, like, to realize, okay, like, honeymoon period is over, which it wouldn't be with only a week. But even if this wasn't due to, to you know, gargoyling and missing Hudson and all of this, like, Grace is still getting intuition. There's something inside her saying, like, you know, fight or flight is kicking in. She's getting almost repulsion. And I've gone through that where, you know, I've had a partner that we've... We've been on again, off again, broke up, got back together, tried it. And then like when he touches me or kissed me, I was just like, I just, I, I don't want, I don't want you. And I started to feel panicky when he wanted that affection. And, you know, that's, that's a sign that you need to take a little step back and, you know, not, not just, uh, respect what your own body is telling you, but have a talk with that individual because she's not really telling Jax and what she's feeling right now and maybe it's because she's afraid that she'll hurt him but she should definitely be saying like there's I, I'm getting really something weird. wrong yeah there's something wrong there's something not right here and I don't know what it is but I I just need your your patience and we need to go at my pace and and figure this out yeah she also, she also suddenly like starts talking about how guilty she is that she's making him wait and I'm like yeah it's no. been a week yeah he's not I know it's been longer for him but still 
if you are in a new relationship with somebody and they are like and and honestly he is not jackson is not pressuring her no if not they at are all pressuring you only four months in already that's very alarm bells ringing like red flag calm down four months isn't that long to wait no, no, in God. In the grand scheme of things. God, do you remember, like, four four months ago? What was going on four months ago? Was that October? October, November, December? Yeah. October, November, December, January. November. Yeah, f- October. Like, I feel like I was... I just took my Halloween decorations down. Like, I... Four months is I was nothing. on my way. Yeah, you were, you were coming <laughs> to visit me in Ohio. Like, it feels like it was just yesterday. Like, four months is nothing at all in, in the grand scheme of things. It feels that way when you're younger, but... I four months pass and I don't even I'm like what did I get done these last <laughs> I've, yeah. been, I've been dicking off these last four months how did that even happen how was that possible um so we've got another scenario where Grace can't sleep so she decides to stumble around and go don't don't walk around don't do that yeah don't don't do that anymore like don't. and she even has that moment where she's like yeah but last time I tried to sneak around in the in the night I I nearly got kicked out of the front doors into the snow but she still doesn't take a coat with her. She's like, it should be fine. It'll be fine. I'm in my pajamas. No one, no one's trying to kill me this time because the people that they tried to kill are dead. It's fine. Yeah, just forget the fact that uh, that you know, Jackson has already said that she is in the last book that he she's a pawn in the game just because he likes her. Like that 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 would be the ultimate way to get back at him. And the factions are clearly still feuding so and they still don't know where hudson is yeah yeah exactly she has no idea where hudson is but she decides to go to the art studio which you know we're already we're getting some clues here because she doesn't know why but her feet are just carrying her there and she doesn't even well she also says that the class that she went to the art class their teacher asked them to paint what their subconscious was feeling yeah um, and she didn't know what she was painting, uh, but she really did try to tap into it. And she said that she painted some weird thing of like dark blues and blacks and purples. But then during the middle of the night, she starts kind of subconsciously being drawn back to the art studio. Yeah. Her feet are moving without her really thinking about where she's going. And it's not only like, it's picked one classroom it's picked a classroom where like she has to either risk her life going outside in the cold or she has to go through the most harrowing place that she has been in since she's got here she's got to go through the tunnels so clearly her her subconscious wants her firstly acknowledge the fact that these tunnels terrify her but also overcome her fear through going through them alone on her own terms yeah, she, not sure why at night. But <laughs> facing her fears because they're empty. There's no risk of other students being there, mm-hmm. so it's it's completely empty. She's being forced to kind of face her fears there, um, and then and this is the first time she actually gets to look around and see what is actually in the tunnels. Because every time she's gone to the tunnels, it's either been that like she's being hurried along by Flint or Leah, or she was being murdered. Right, right. So she's actually like acknowledging each step within the tunnels and is like talking about the manacles and the shackles and and she starts like looking at them and then realizing that they're not like old and rusted, they're brand new silver chains. And she's like, what could they possibly be for in a school? Yeah, they're immaculate. Do we ever get answers to why those chains are immaculate like later in the series we don't know why they're new i assume that it's so like freshly like you know change yeah students that are changing you know going through that change they're not in control of their bodies it's a way to restrain them without hurting them maybe they just haven't had to use them yet um yeah it, it could be something like that um, we also got we also got a um a hint as to another creature. Whilst they were in Macy's room, she said that first of all they didn't believe that Grace could be a gargoyle, that she could have been cursed by a witch or a siren. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We get giants I, and sirens have been. I was introduced. surprised that Medusa wasn't thrown out. <laughs> she was turned to stone. I would not assume that sirens had anything to do with it, but sure. Yeah, yeah, that's that was a new one. 
Um, and, and giants are a new one, which both of those, you know, mm-hmm. when I first started reading Crave, I, I just assumed like once we found out that it's dragons and werewolves and witches and oh vampires, my. and then we got gargoyle. Like I thought that was it. I'm like, okay, that's it. That's yeah. all the creatures. And now we're getting, no. now we're getting. You wait more. till cover guys. You wait till cover. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure um, we'll get more in court. And uh, yes, yeah, so she's she's walking to the art studio. And something is picking up her feet and is is moving them for her. And it she just kind of explains it away as just a drive to paint. That she she has this overwhelming feeling that she needs to paint, and that she, she can visualize painting so well that she even knows what background she's going to have. That she knows what she's going to paint, and she can even feel the paint on her fingers and smell it in the air. So she is walking and walking and walking to the studio, and as she's getting there. She wants to unlock one of the doors and realizes that the padlock just falls open in her hand. I had to read this passage like three or four times. And I thought that maybe suddenly she had got like super strength and had broken the padlock. But then she was like, no, I swear it was closed. I swear it was locked when I left my class this afternoon. And then when she gets into the art studio, all the lights are on. All the candles are lit. Hmm. This is a good. But no one's there. Let's let's uh let's transition into spoiler topics because I. You I have a theory. Well, it's not it's not necessarily a theory. It's just there's no way to discuss this without spoiling, and I think that we've we've hit all the topics for non spoilers. So we'll just <laughs> yeah. Oh, woo. Okay. Um. <laughs> woo. <laughs> yeah. We get more and more enthusiastic every time. I feel like this is Hudson. He's he's doing things that are trying to coax her into finding the truth and remembering. And right now, she, there's that wall in between them. Like he is behind this wall, and she cannot hear him. He is still inside her. He's able to view everything that's taking place. So I think that whatever power he does have available to him from where he's at right now in her mind, he is doing things to coax her forward so that she can get one step closer to revealing the truth. And right now, one of the only places that he's been able to see any glimpses of her knowing the truth is through that art studio where she's starting to paint his lair. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but Lulu Lucky actually has uh, on her red bubble, there is a... uh, her interpretation of um, Hudson's lair, just based on what was described through Grace's uh, Grace's painting. Does Jackson have a lair? I don't know. Do 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 they all have layers? Is this because well, the blood letter does? The blood letter does have a lair. She does she refer to it as her lair? Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But yeah, I I think that Hudson knows that through her art, she's able to reach a part of herself that that wouldn't normally be able to come out and he's he's coaxing her there. So that's I also think that he is very conscious of the fact that he is currently controlling her and he swore that he would never do it and he feels very uncomfortable doing it, but also he doesn't want to scare her. And I think that there could have been very, very easy solutions to making her realize that he was still like stuck in her mind. Um, like for example, if he had full control of her body, he could have, instead of making her paint his lair and realizing that she had full control still when she was painting, he could have just painted on the surface, uh, help, I'm still inside you, Hudson. (laughs) Ew. (laughs) Um, uh, or something like that but i think that that would genuinely terrify her yeah so he doesn't he tries to do it in the most gentle and coaxing <laughs> way he possibly can and i'm like i feel like it was a missed opportunity <laughs> you know, this is, i know i keep i always have other books and things to reference while we're doing this because it it just there are some things that that make me laugh but you you saying that reminds me of and i always have this question in prisoner of azkaban when sirius appears in um in the crystal ball and he's just like harry potter and i'm like why don't you just like say hey harry i'm not a bad guy no i'm going to whisper <laughs> all ominously and evil 
and make myself seem as terrifying <laughs> as possible rather than just be like, yep, bro, don't panic. I've got some crazy shit to tell you. Listen up. Like, same, same with when <laughs> Harry has just exploded his aunt and he stood at the side of the like the road waiting for the the night bus and then this big <laughs> dog comes growling out of the bush and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're terrifying him. Like in Stop! What, what universe is that a good idea? Like, I don't know. Yeah, and it's the same thing. Like, Hudson, he could just, like, leave her a basket of cinnamon rolls like he does in the Cat Mirror Academy <laughs> guide and be like, hey, so... <laughs> we love each other. I'm still stuck inside your mind. Um, Help me figure this out because I need to talk to you. Help. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Yeah, because like you said in the, the first spoiler, um, the chemistry with Jackson is just like you can feel it sizzling out and it's awkward yeah. for me to read. Like I felt bad. Oh, yeah. First read through, I felt bad because I'm like, oh, they're, she, Grace is, Grace is, you know, doesn't she, want any. Yeah, she's losing it. And Jackson, he's really trying and I feel really bad. But yeah, I was like being really, 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 really horny. But then with the one guy that you wouldn't want it with is presenting yourself and you're like, oh, I am horny. But not for no. you. Yeah. And yeah. then and then Flint, meanwhile, I mean, we talked about how him and Grace are <laughs> being flirty and we couldn't say it before because we didn't want to spoil the fact that, you know, Flint's actually gay. Yeah. But, but you know, maybe he's trying to get a rise <laughs> out of Jackson because it's like that, that you know, the, the tugging your hair. Oh, he's just tugging your hair because he likes you. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's, you know doing something that's going to get a response from Jackson, but he's also got that glimmer in his eye that where he's clearly hurting, you know, mm -hmm. because he, he does. He deflates. He, def he, he yeah. completely deflates when he realizes that Jackson doesn't bite. Mm -hmm. Um, because uh, I think he tells a joke and then realizes that Jackson's just ignoring him. Like he's taking the high road and is pretending that he doesn't exist. Yeah. And um, Flint just just completely disintegrates and he's like, oh. Yeah, he, starts... he still tries again. Yeah, he does. It's like he gets a little more aggressive with it, trying to get a response. And finally, when he gets one, it's getting punched in the mouth. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm also wondering whether Flint is also looking at the relationship between Jackson and Grace and thinking if I was trapped in a gargoyle for four months, the first thing that I would not be doing is going back to class. Like I would be kissing my boyfriend as hard as I possibly could and be very excited to see him. But instead I'm in class. And then the first thing you do when you see each other now is be weird around each other. And I don't know. Like, maybe he's also seeing that there's not really any chemistry anymore, or never was to begin with. And is also seeing, like, oh, is this my opening? Yeah, that that could be it as well, where he's kind of observing, like, Grace's behavior. But he really hasn't been around yeah. enough to, he's like, to see it. He knows he knows that, like, Jackson has, has staked the claim that, that Grace is his. But at the same time, it's not like they're infatuated with each other. Um, to the point where, like, Jack... Jackson wouldn't allow any room for Flint to wiggle in, whereas Flint's looking at it from an outside view and going, there's definitely wiggle room here. <laughs> there's some room. There's some yeah. room. I, we can make this a throuple if that's what you really want. I mean, you know, that's the fanfic we always wanted. That is a fanfic that I could. Well, maybe not with maybe not with Jackson. <laughs> I've, I'm still I'm still for I'm still oh, for Hudson. <laughs> you, you ship in the, the Flint and Grace. <laughs> And Hudson. Flace. Fl you were, I was like, that's the thruple. The thruple is a fanfic, but I want it. And you were like, yeah, maybe not with Jackson. And I not, was like, oh. No, not with Jackson. <laughs> we'll throw Hudson into the mix. Oh, Hudson replace and Flint together. Yeah, yeah. Replace Jackson all together. Because okay. two brothers together. That's gross. That's icky. No, mm. I mean, twin girls is always thrown around. Yeah, but that's still icky. That's <laughs> no, no blood relation. That makes no, it no, weird. no, 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 no. Um, so another little thing. Remember last week I had that theory that some of Hudson's mm -hmm. influence, because Grace's personality has completely changed. She started out all shy and sheepish, and then she comes out of the gargoyle, and now she's like, she's actually got her back stone. <laughs> um, and <laughs> like she, the there are a bunch of witches like just kind of talking smack about her in the hallway, and rather than keeping her head down, she like blows him a kiss as she walks by. I'm like, <laughs> that is badass. That is such a Hudson thing to do. Like I feel like he has 
rubbed off his influence on her from all the time that they spent together in the gargoyle. Because as of right now, she spent more time with Hudson than she has with Jackson. She spent a week with Jackson. With anyone else. Yeah, she spent a week with Jackson and months with Hudson. She just doesn't remember it. And, but. and it's not even just a week with Jackson. It was very sporadic moments within that week of Jackson. Whereas with Hudson, it was four solid months yeah, of yeah. just them two. Yeah, and even the beginning, I mean, Jackson, for the first few days. The, so Jackson and Grace's relationship was, what, all of about three days? Four days? Three days? <laughs> yeah. Because he was being a jerk to her the other days. Yeah, it was very, very short. Yep. Um, and then he realized, I can't stay away. Yeah, I can't stay away from you. Yeah. Um. So... <laughs> this, I, have a, I have a theory. <laughs> so... Grace was apparently in Uncle Finn's office for a few days, but then got moved to a back room of the library. Now, we all have our suspicions about Amka. Yeah, I do. For sure. She was in the back room of the library this whole time, and Amka didn't do something? Like, take her phone? And, I don't know whether you guys have noticed, but in the synopsis for Cherish, it says a betrayal is coming. I've... Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Did you read the synopsis? No. It was... Let me let me go find it. Go find speak. it. Yeah, Amka, so we've got our suspicions. If you guys didn't catch it from the first Crave uh, series of podcasts that we did, Amka, she's acting very, very suspicious because she gives Flint that note while he's researching the, the language that Leah uses to try to sacrifice grace because he also needs to try to kill grace before Leah can amka gives grace a note to give to flint that says um there are many ways or a million ways to get somewhere but not all of them are the correct mm -hmm. one but we never hear anything else about that and amka has allowed um leah to use the library after hours in order to access this forbidden language book that she ultimately used to try to sacrifice Grace. And Amka, like, I 100%, she knew. She knew exactly what Grace was and never told her. Like, the fact that there were little gargoyles all the way around the library, that the, the moment that they met, she kind of gave hints as to what she was. Um, yeah. Like she she speaks about the fact that she's not human, yeah, and kind of pairs Grace with it. She knew, and there was a very select number of people that knew what Grace was, and for some reason Amka is part of it. Yeah, I'm suspicious. And of also her. she's and and she disappears as well after this this one where she, she I think um in Crush she manages to obviously give loads of books with about gargoyles to grace but grace never manages to read them well amka gives grace that pile of books and then that's when hudson takes over grace's body in the library to go and get the sword is that what ha is that uh i don't remember we need to <laughs> yeah we'll get there more. but yeah that. but that's the first time that hudson truly takes over grace's body and she can't remember and she just wakes up covered in blood right yeah. Yeah. Has it ever said whose blood it was? Yes. Okay. I'll just have to remember that where I get to the bit. Yes. But anyway, so the synopsis for Cherish. What happened at Catmere definitely isn't staying at Catmere. Grace has finally graduated from Catmere Academy, but the dangers from the school aren't quite done with her. Now she and her friends must travel to the Shadow Realm to rescue one of their own. But there are still a few new surprises waiting for Grace, along with a betrayal that could destroy them all. That tells me nothing. <laughs> the Shadow Realm shadow. wasn't even mentioned. Okay, so we have a Shadow Realm. So that's that's completely new. That's not something that well, was like teased or foreshadowed at any point. Like I don't even know what would live in the Shadow Realm. It's clear to me that the that the cover, because we've got the crown and then the reflection of the crown is a more feminine it's crown. Oily. It's like it also looks very oily, like black and oily. Well, it's like, I think that it, oh, I didn't notice that. I was going to say it's more like of a feminine, like Grace's and Hudson's crowns. I thought that it was them becoming the, um, the own like court leaders. 
Yeah. And also it's it's cracked. Yeah, it's all cracked, like like stone almost. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But um okay, so two more points. Um she does you you put that it's just the mating bond, which I assume was Yeah. She starts talking about the fact that like maybe the reason why she likes Jackson is it's just the mating bond, that she never was given a choice in the matter as to who she was allowed to love until the end of Covet. She chooses. Yeah, that's I get I got real sick in throughout Covet hearing her say that about Hudson. Oh, it's just a mating bond. It's just a mating bond. And I I, th- I think it was well. because she also felt like it was about Jackson. Was that it was just the mating bond that the re- that she wasn't ever given a choice as to who she was loved, uh, who she could love. Like the fate just decided who she was supposed to love. Yeah. But then at the end of Covet, she was actually able to go. Do you know what? Screw it. The person I love is Hudson. Yeah, and this is my choice, and no one can take that away from me. And I think that it means more. But if if she had just accepted the mating bond with Jackson, and then he had removed it, broken it, or whatever, and then Hudson came along and was like, "Oh, this is my mate now," and she'd be like, "Okay," like it wouldn't mean as much because she was just going along with whatever the world had decided who she was supposed to be with. Yeah, I like it's it's like Pokemon, like. Hudders, I what? choose you. I was not, ex- I was not expecting that. <laughs> Use earthquake. It's just like Pokemon. It's just... <laughs> Boy, I was not expecting that fandom mix there. That was that was a crossover and a half. Hudders, okay, I I've choose got, you. I've got a bit of I've got a bit of whiplash from that. <laughs> Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> Diglett. <laughs> it's Diglett. Oh God. Um So those those that is the end of our spoilers. Do, do you have anything else before we uh move on to fan questions? Um no the the only other thing that I wanted to let you guys know is that last week uh, on Sunday I posted our latest Crave ASMR. For those of you who mm-hmm. are uh wondering how to find those, they only post to our YouTube channel. They do not post here. So you have to go to Crave uh the book podcast on YouTube and subscribe. That really helps us even if you prefer to listen to the podcast on Spotify or wherever else I uh, audible you can listen to it as well but if you would prefer to listen on youtube we do have a video that kind of goes with the podcast a little slideshow thing that plays um but the crave asmrs those are good for reading for sleeping for cleaning or if you just like working with some ambient tracks uh we did potion making with macy did you by chance listen to any of that one yet not yet but i did i did listen to the story with the bubble bubble bubble, bubble oh, the, and i was like ooh that's one sound out of it i used uh i think i used 20 to 30 unique sounds for that one um all layered together to do the potion making and you get macy giggling every few minutes like as she's making her potions and stirring them it's like concocting some yeah. weird crap she's like <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly and then there's like different noises that come after she's mixed a potion it's fun um and then this upcoming week uh we are doing a storm chasing with flint asmr so that is so going excited yeah that one's going to be really good it's going to be flint's wings flapping and it starts out with just wind gusting and thunder rumbling in the background but then uh, the thunder kicks up and it starts raining and then the rain gets really intense and you hear flip flapping even more fiercely and grunting through the storm and then the rain kind of subsides and he lands. So you get all of those sounds as well. But those come with a little fun video, a little slideshow that plays. Um, and yeah, I want to have a nice collection of them for when we read Court. Um, we also did the yes. Walk to the Giants Village was another one that I did. And that one's probably my favorite. I, I, I listened to that one all the way through over and over and over again. Because it's, it's, it's not the kind of thing that like there are certain abrupt noises in it. It's just very like twinkly, twinkly trees and little chirpy, chirpy birds and then footsteps and things yeah. like that. And it was like really relaxing to have like really low volume. Mm-hmm. But the snow one, for example, you have to actually listen to it like a quite high volume to be able to, <laughs> yeah. to hear any of it. I'm not happy with the snow. You're one. getting I'm... better. You're getting better at them. Yeah, the snow one, it, I didn't equalize the volume. So every 30 seconds it like cuts out and I can't listen to that one. I might delete <laughs> it and redo it later. But um, yeah, feeling guys. cute, might delete. <laughs> yeah, feeling cute, might delete. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of there that was, um. 
there's also the issue of like what do we do for Valentine's Day because there's there's two there's two that could be they're hung up on like between the two um so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it with you or should we put it with a poll um let so it, it could either be the date or the laundry room I think we're gonna do the laundry room and the reason for okay. that is Doing these up to polls, sometimes I find out at the last minute that I cannot collect enough sounds to make it happen. <laughs> like the duck sound that we yeah. struggled so hard to find. Yeah. Every once in a while, I just realize that it's not possible. So, yeah. Um, are you ready for our fan poll? Yes, I am. I only did one. We didn't do a fan question this week. Um, just the poll because we did get the new cover for Cherish. And it was... Do you guys love the new book cover for Cherish? It was is... <laughs> nice and simple. Yeah, uh, Amber, what do you think the results are? Uh, I love it. I, I I think that it was exactly what we were imagining that it was going to be. So it was nice to have like our thoughts confirmed. Um, it's also a really nice purple, nice catmail purple, and it goes with the series. the The worst, the worst series are when none of the colors go nicely together. And each book is a different color, but none of them are actually of the same hue. Oh, and it actually hurts my like graphic design eyes to look at it at a shelf. And it's like a red, a green, a yellow, a blue. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this looks awful. But they're all the same sort of muted tones. And it looks really good next to the, like one another. Like with the photo that she sent well, of, of all five books together, it looked really good. Aside from the white, like on my shelf. No, six. Yeah, aside. Five? Six. Uh, five. five with with uh, with charm but so far like on my shelf you know when once court arrives it was looking a bit like german flaggy the the out of the darkness <laughs> through the blood and into the sun i'm like oh this is this looks like a german flag so the blue and the purple are gonna break that up and give it a little bit of i'm probably gonna put charm um you know i might actually put charm in in between crave and um crush on my shelf because that was the hope that the, the guide to catmare also comes up because then that would be yeah. really cool to have like a a little mini novella in the middle yeah yeah that'd be fun um all right so what i mean do you think that anybody hated the book cover like really no no, no. i don't think they did <laughs> no it was it was 100 percent. 114 people all said and that's just because this well was, done yeah well done the publishing team yes absolutely tracy uh she said in past interviews that she doesn't get to choose what goes on the covers um which really yeah yeah she she doesn't oh. have, she said uh in interviews that she doesn't get to pick um and yeah, they. I think that they do a great job because they stand out. If you're a fan of Twilight, that's how most of us found the Crave series is we saw it on a shelf and we're like, oh, this is Twilighty. And then you pick it up and it's like, uh, like I've said, it's definitely more um, dark academia, whereas Twilight is a completely different universe. I, I feel more confident handing my child Crave someday as opposed to handing her Twilight, <laughs> yeah. just because there's less abusive situations and things. But um, last little note that I wanted to point out is that my book is available now. Amber, have you read my book yet? I am a few chapters in. I started reading when I didn't feel very well on, on was Friday or Saturday. I think it was Friday, the day that it came out. Um, but then the weekend got away and I actually slept most of it. <laughs> so I really did not feel very well. And I wanted to actually pay attention because this is the first time I actually get to read it without editing. And I'm going to be honest, I started reading it and then I still had my editing brain out. So I was like trying to look for mistakes rather than get immersed. <laughs> so I think that I needed to stop and then I'm going to start again and try and read it properly where I was going to enjoy it because I've not found a single mistake. I'm very excited um and the beginning is so much better so much better than when i read it the first time um it flows so much better yeah it's um, what well, it's gone through so many edits since the last time you read it <laughs> things things have been yeah. removed things have been added it's it's a lot more refined but uh guys the channel by me starla moore i just had a huge <laughs> by me by i me. tried to get so there was there was two things that happened that were very very exciting but both of them one of them notifications that i cleared before i even like you know when you clear a notification before you've actually read it but your subconscious knows exactly what it said and yeah you're like, shit i can't get a screenshot now um, and it said, um, the channel available to order now, a release date. And it's like, 
I got very excited, but I'd already clicked the notification Aww. before I could screenshot it. And the other one was a notification on our Alexa. Um, and we managed to say, like, what and what are our notifications? And it says, um, an author that you uh, connect with, Starla Moore, has a book on uh, Amazon. Would you like to order it? And I was like, <gasps> but. But obviously, once you'd already asked it, you couldn't get to right. say it again. <laughs> and we were like, no. We even tried to go through the app to see whether it would do it that way, but it, it didn't. We were really sad. Yeah. But yeah, it was very exciting that there was there was many multiple channels of getting people to have a look at your Amazon. So yeah, yeah. Um, guys, go check it out. The channel by Starla Moore. As of right now, we're having issues with the hardbacks. Um, there's just a print issue. We're, we're working it out. They are going to be shipping soon, but paperback is available through prime and you can get the ebook. You can also get it through barnesandnoble.com. If you would prefer to have the hardback, you can order it and get it a lot faster through Barnes and Noble. But if you want the paperback quickly, you can get it through Amazon. And if you want the, uh, the ebook, you can get it for Nook. You can get it for Apple books. You can get it through, uh, through Kindle and all those things but uh, yeah tracy and i had a big long conversation this morning about it i forgot that tracy i had an entire conversation with tracy wolf this morning and i just completely forgot um she was asking about it she's like how did your launch go and i'm like oh tracy you have no idea how bad things with amazon <laughs> are and she's like actually i do and i'm like oh yeah of course you do yeah she was, <laughs> yeah she, i read i read some of the conversation and um yeah, yeah. That the one where the uh, the people forgot a zero. That was quite <laughs> oh yeah, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy was telling so, us yeah. a story about how she had a book a, a book that was supposed to go to a bookstore and um, she was supposed to have twenty thousand copies sent and they only sent two thousand and they didn't notice until launch day. I'm like oh yeah, well I've got like. 20 orders of my book so far so yeah, yeah that's still good though that's amazing for a first time publishing book yeah and you haven't got a single review yet so i'm gonna plan to change that as soon as i've actually finished it yeah yeah you know what somebody did review it and it's not showing on amazon <gasps> yet so i don't know oh one. that's but frustrating I, I do have one <laughs> review on goodreads so you can review me there but guys go go give me some love over at the channel um you can you can follow my instagram at explore the channel I'm going to be doing a ton of giveaways. I've got playlists for all of my characters. Uh, I really want to see some fan art. I would love to see what you guys think the world and the characters look like. <laughs> I'm so excited for that part. I've got some great art um, from that I paid for that we're using for merch and stuff. But I would like to, I like seeing what other people visualize, especially for like Dax's character and things. You know, it would be. Yeah, I remember you sending me, sending me the artwork and you're like, is this what you thought that he looked like for the the two main characters? And I was like, oh, and you, your artist just couldn't get him beefy enough <laughs> no he's not beefy enough my artist he did i mean he did a great job but it's definitely not what i pictured but you know i'm not gonna they would i'm not gonna rat on somebody's like artistic skills there but i did pay a lot of money for them either way i want to see some beefy pictures of, of jason some beefy buffy big men big men and dax dax my yeah my evil puppy but guys uh the channel go read it and uh Listen for this Sunday, the new Crave ASMR, Storm Chasing with Flint. That will be posting at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Amber will be in bed, but she is obligated yep. to listen to it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have no personal updates. So, Aww. and it, it will always be boring for me, I'm guessing. Go so follow Amber like... Marie Studio. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> who I also, yeah. I totally sent your page to Tracy Wolf this morning. Oh God! I did. I oh did. no! I did. Yeah, uh. yeah. So, guys, go follow Amber Marie Studio. Go, uh, go look at Amber's beautiful artwork. She's not painting pictures of layers, um, but she is. No, I'm not. She's drawing adorable puppies. So, go follow her. There's order, pu order puppies. She draws order puppies. Pu and this weekend, I'm going to the grooming show, and I will try and get some cute photos of like fluffy puppies up in my stories. If you wanted to have a look. Yes, follow Amber Marie Studio for puppies. Follow Crave Series Aesthetic for podcast stuff. Follow Explore the Channel for neon noir, cyberpunky, hunky, cybernetic K boy. K Kitty Chinos. Huh? And Kitty Chinos. And, and yes, and Kitty Catachino. I, I, made up, I made up the word <laughs> and I can't even say it. Catachino. All right. Catachino. Guys, thanks so much for listening and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.